we're back for another episode of Short and Sweet. I am Corey Kukru alongside Heather Atwood. How are you, Heather? I'm really great. And, you know, how could I not be great sitting with all these beautiful flowers, This right? is gorgeous because today's guest is an old friend of mine, Farmer Bob Marshall of Marshall's Farmston, of course, over in West Gloucester. How are you doing, Bobby? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for doing this with us. Uh, we go back a long ways. Um, but I'm sure, Heather, you have 9,000 questions for Bobby, too. I do, because I don't go back. I go back as far as about five minutes ago. No, I've <laughs> oh, really? shopped, I shop at Marshall Farms all the time. Yeah. But I don't stop and say, so tell me who you are <laughs> and where you come from. That's all it would take with me, <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. All right, so let's start now. Tell, start from the beginning. So I come from a family of 12, and um, my father wanted a labor force, so to speak. The farm started, the farm stand itself started in 67. And um, prior to that, we were a dairy farm. Um, we were a dairy farm from We the, meaning like your grandfather? My great-grandfather. Wow. My great-grandfather and my dad. My grandfather, who was a caretaker uh, in different uh, estates around uh, Gloucester. He would do all the, the plantings and hay cutting back then. Um, but my great-grandfather, William F. Marshall, and my dad... Um, started the dairy farm. My dad, every day growing up, it was the same routine. Milk the cows, go to school. Milk the cows, go to school. And then on Sunday, milk the cows, go to church. That's a long day. Yeah. That is, and um, How many cows did they have? Oh, I'm not even sure because yeah. it was a little bit before my time. Yeah, right. um, but they had, they had cows in Gloucester, and then they had another dairy farm in the family in New Hampshire. And they would drive the cows back and forth back in the 1800s. So you could do like, that. Like drive them? Yes. Really? Yes. Like uh, is it on horses, like saying move cows? Uh, I don't even know if they had horses. They might have been walking. <laughs> but um, that's, that, that's with... What it, part of New Hampshire? I, I can't... We haven't got... We found a milk bottle that says Marshall's Milk, and it was in... Um, I can't remember the name of... Uh, if you say um, Southern New Hampshire... Newton, New Hampshire. My family not had a farm Newton, in Newton, New Hampshire. Not Newton, New Hampshire. It was, I cannot recall the name, but yeah. we have a milk bottle that says Marshall Farm, and it's in the southern part of New Hampshire. And we've tried to dig up more information, but there's not a lot of people around with that information. Yeah, right. Um, My I did find. Dead. I did. <laughs> I did find a gentleman that's retired in F Florida that used to milk cows with my dad, and when I, me and Corey. We're doing the the history of Marshalls. He sent me a letter, and it goes on to him milking the cows f with my dad for my great grandfather, and you know he just goes on and on. And his I couldn't believe his memory. Um, so that's how that started out. And then my dad started to grow potatoes and onions just just to kind of have and in the same you know same area, area of West Gloucester. Mm -hmm. And um, what happened there is people started peddling things. He peddled the potatoes and onions for seafood and other things. So that that's how the farm stand became what it is today. It just they they had the road st side stand, plywood, milk crates and right. just sold what they grew. Um, and then it just went from there. On the property, the, the farm stand was like a closet. But everything else was strawberry fields, um, raspberry fields. We had a, a big chunk of corn, tomatoes. Um, you know, so we grew everything there until it got too big, and we rented land. Um, it's a cemetery now. Uh, right, up at oh, Dolliver's, yeah. Dolliver's Cemetery in yeah. West Gloucester. Oh, yeah. okay. We used to grow a big uh, field of different vegetables in there. And, um, and then we rented land in Essex for, for a number of years. This is all in the early 70s. And then, um, and then we started doing business with Marini Farms in Ipswich. And that's where... Great family. Great family, it, where we started the connection. Where we, we would grow certain things and share with them. They would grow certain things and share with us. And that's just gone... And I love, uh, we were talking beforehand, and you made the comparison to um, the other farmers we talked to, the young farmers we yep. talked to, Tucker. Tucker and, and Noah. And Noah yeah. having yeah. this relationship. Yeah. And you guys had a right. similar relationship. Exactly. You know, way back when. And it makes perfect sense. When I saw the interview with Tucker, I, I, it, it hit a home run because it, if you if you got to do it alone, you're going to go out of business and, and, and the farm will be gone. 
Yeah. But if you can lean on each other, reach out to each other, have, you know, open uh, dialogue, y- you can do anything together. You want to tell that story of your relationship with the Marinis because that's a well, beautiful one. Well, when I grew up on the farm, um, it's the last thing I thought I would do for work. I, I did everything from I worked for KP and Glass. I worked for a moving company. I, d- I ran my own landscaping crew. I did everything but anything I had to do with the farm until um, my dad in 93 was very persistent in saying, come back, give the farm, help me run the farm stand for one year. If you don't want to do it after this year, no problem. And you're the youngest of those I'm, 12 I'm kids. I'm number 12. <laughs> yeah. I'm number 12. So I think he, he probably called everybody. And he <laughs> said they weren't taking his call. <laughs> yeah. Bobby. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. 11 said no. Yeah. Go to 12. <laughs> so um, he called. And I, I, I was like the third phone call he made to me. And I says, okay, I'll do it for one year. And then that's it. Sure enough, two weeks later, he, he passed. Um, I think he knew it was coming. I think he wanted to get his ducks in a row. He didn't want the farm stand to suffer. Um, at the time, the greenhouses was such a huge business, and the farm stand was an afterthought. And he didn't want that to disappear because he, that was his baby. The farm stand. Farm stand. Yeah. So I did that, and I says, now what do I do? Um, I, I really didn't know the background of running a farm. I knew how to grow, grow things and pick things, but I didn't know the business side of things. You know, at, at being a farmer, you got to be a, a carpenter, an electrician, a plumber. you got to yeah. do everything. Mario Marini took me under his wing, and he says, look, we'll do it together. Uh, I'm going to be there with every step of the way, and it, it, it just, it was incredible. It, and he's, he's a special man. Um, He's, he's been in my life since I was a baby, and uh, I don't know where the farm would be without him and his uh, leadership. That's really great. Yeah, yeah. And I was, so to get even deeper there, so what is the state of family farming these days around here? It's very scarce. Yeah. Because I know, I know farms that, uh, I, I know a farm in uh, Newport, Rhode Island, I do a little bit of business with, and um, they've had 20 greenhouses, and they had down to five greenhouses. Mm. They put in solar panels because they have nobody that's coming along to take it over. So what they'll do is switch it all over to solar panels, and they'll be able to, to survive. So they're farming the sun the is sun. what they're doing now. Yeah, yeah they're so using their land for that. He, he just says, there's nobody else. You know, step up. We got all this property. We can't do it anymore. I mean, he's he struggled just to bring me a handful of plants. Um and, and, you know, he's a great grower, great family. Um, it's, it's just not, it's not pretty unless you have somebody that's going to step up. I yeah. heard um, I, the Italian man who's the head of the, the president of the slow food movement. Have you heard about the slow food I movement? actually just got an email yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Uh, well, he, I heard him address a group once and he said, I'm talking to you young people. You have to start farming. Right. This is going to be the end if you don't learn right. to farm. Yeah. Well, luckily for me. I've got my 20-year-old son, this next generation, and he loves it. He loves everything about it. Um, he's still for us, too. Yeah, well, he's, yeah. Still, he's still learning, but Corey's met Jason many oh, yeah. a times, and he's just a great kid. You know, he's, he's down to earth. He's very, very intelligent. Um, now he's just going to get... This gets a generation, yeah. you say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> um, but he is... Uh, he, he's like a sponge. He cannot get enough of it. Um, it was, I had a picture, a nice picture of him and my brother Billy who were transplanting. He was showing my brother Billy, who's the, the, uh, the oldest of the family, he's 69. He um, was showing my son how to transplant. And I got a picture of it and posted it on social media without Billy knowing because if he knew, he was, be pretty. If yeah. he, knew he was on social media, <laughs> I think uh, he would really chase me down. Yeah, he's an old soul. But yeah. But it it warmed my heart that that he's really taken to it. Um, you know, he he just loves everything about it. So what's so about so then? So do you learn? Did you learn to love? To I farm? had to. Yeah, I had to. In that first year, uh, my first year of running the farm, my schedule was probably three days a week. I would have to go into the produce market. I would go in with uh, Mario Marini's uh, manager. 
at 2 o'clock in the morning. And we would be bringing produce in to sell and then picking produce to come back with, like, stuff from out of state, like, you know, your peaches, your uh, nectarines, grapes, and things like that. Did that three days a week. So we would get back to the farm about 6.30, 7 in the morning, set up the farm stand, go to the field, grow, irrigate, weed, pick, all that, go down, have lunch. My mother would make me a sandwich. I'd fall asleep on the sandwich. Mm. And then about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, go back out, do some cashiering, because I only had one cashier that back then. I would do some cashiering, then go back to the field, do some more work up there, come back down, help close the farm stand, and then go back to the field, get all the irrigation out. You know, just yeah. that was... That summer alone, I think I averaged about 130 hours of working a week. And it, I did that for eight years, and I didn't think I could do it anymore. I, I thought I was, you know, I, it was... In, Cooked. Oh, it was, I was fried. And so, changed things up. We started growing a little bit less, but being part of what is called a farm co-op mm -hmm. with Marini Farms. So, we grow together. You know, and that's where we were talking about I grow things for them, they grow things for me. And, but now it's just one joint venture. It's one, one uh, farm co-op. And that saved both of us because uh, Mario Marini's in his 80s. Um, his son Michael is like a little brother to me. Me and him are joined to the hip like his dad and my dad were. were. And um, so me and Michael are growing together. And it's, it's a great partnership. Um, we, we talk 10 times a day about everything under the sun, literally. And um, it, it just it makes it so much enjoyable because you, nobody wants to work a full day. I mean, you don't want to work a full day and then, and then you have to go do a podcast, <laughs> you know, and you're, you're falling asleep on the mic. Yeah. You know, you, you, want, you want to be able to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you and know? you also want to be able to share the misery, like, oh my, yeah, yeah. we can't oh. understand what you, the kind of oh, day yeah. you've had, but right. Michael can. Oh, right? and, and he calls me about every little thing. It could be a staffing issue. It could be a, a insect issue. It could be almost anything. Uh, it could be just a customer say, saying something funny. And I've had quite a few customers say things funny that I wish I had a video okay, camera. Okay, we need, a funny, we need <laughs> a funny line here. Give us one. All right, this woman, little old lady comes in, and it was Sunday morning, right after we opened, and she came, came in with a paper bag. And I'm like, oh, no. What did she buy? What did she buy? And she's walking. She asks the cashier, you know, it's the owner here. And, and she sends it over to me. My heart's going, do, 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 do. And I'm like, what did she buy? What did she says, excuse me, sir. And I says, yes. And she says, um, I had your corn last night. And I'm like, oh. The corn, the corn. <laughs> um, and I says, okay. She says, it was delicious. I was like, okay. She opens up the bag, and it's the... E the, the, the cobs? It's the cobs that's been eaten mm -hmm. with yeah. all the husk. She says, what do I do with this? <laughs> oh, are you kidding? She didn't uh, know how to dispose of it? I'm like, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> and I... Uh, that is so I, funny. I want thank you, and I hope you have a great day. Jeez. <laughs> so she would maybe never had corn on the cob? I don't know Weird. what it was. I At that point, I had a big grin on my yeah, face. Yeah, right, and, and didn't want to go there. And, and I we're says, all done. <laughs> uh, don't push the, the, yeah. uh, the, the yeah. issue here. Yeah. Um, but that was one of my funnier ones. That is <laughs> funny. Yeah. So now as part of like, surviving today and thriving today, is this how like you and Marini end up introducing sort of new features and facets to the farm? Like, I know Marini's got the big corn maze, right. you've got the alpaca right. pen, and there's more animals and features right. like that. Yeah, you know, and that's the whole thing is we, we don't have the space for a corn maze, mm -hmm. but um, he's doing things that with limited space, that we're gonna we're gonna start to incorporate, mm -hmm. but it's not something you can just hit a switch and do it. You know, you got to line up everything, and before you release it, um, this talk of maybe in the future having birthday parties at the farm, having uh, planting parties at the farm. Yeah, he does a big uh, during Christmas season. He does a big reef making thing at the farm. It's the, it's like the um, and it's in the food kitchens now. You, you have these cooking classes. My wife did cooking classes with a friend. You know, they all go and have a ball. 
you it's know. It's a lot of fun. It, it is. Yeah. And it's a great night out, and it's a great way of getting your, your name out there, for one thing, but also getting what you do. Right. Yeah. And so and, and something that's also happened recently in Marshalls is, is the sort of refreshing of the greenhouses. Yeah. In that yes. area. And yeah. this is the bounty that yeah. we've got, yes. right? These are um, so beautiful. My sister Karen ran it for the, close to the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, she had taken uh, managing it over for my brother Billy. And because Billy's always been in, involved in the greenhouse from the exception. I think it started in 70, 71. That was when the first greenhouse was built. built. And Billy... I've had people from all over Massachusetts that have said, your brother Billy is the best grower in Massachusetts. And these people I've just met at like uh, trade shows or uh, farmers meetings, and they come out of the, they says, hey, you're a marshal. You know, your brother Billy's still growing? I says, yeah. And they, st they all say it. He's one of the best growers. And his knowledge, I will never, ever know as much as what yeah. he knows he isn't he's a living encyclopedia oh incredible you ask what him what does it take to be a great grower i think it's just trial and error yeah. i think uh being a sponge to the the new stuff that's coming out um and yeah. you have to know the science like some, the of the science, some of the science some of the science some of the soil science i mean he can i mean we actually had to switch soils um for for these plants this year and these that, guys right here yep yeah. we we had to do that and we were, he was scared to death he was like no we, we need that same i says they don't make it anymore we gotta he says okay bring me three different bags and i'll test it and we'll pick the right one mm -hmm. now and and it wasn't like he put something in a test tube and te he, uh, he just grabbed it gave it a sniff gave it a look wow. and as you see yeah these are beautiful yeah Dyes. so so when my sister did decide to retire, um, there was nobody else right at the time. My son was very eager to, to jump into this because he had done the farm stand end of things. So it's been a pleasant surprise, but it's also scaring me because of this weather and people are, are, are stuck inside. They can't get out in their garden. I probably turned away more people than we've actually had customers because I don't I nurtured these guys I mean these plants here came in like an inch two inch size and they were at this I don't want somebody to lose them and, and they're too expensive to to just hey take them and, and best of luck and know? can we point out that dahlias usually bloom in the fall no those are uh, uh, a bulb that you plant in right. the ground that's what I'm thinking yeah I mean, I... these are early bulbs um, they come in a, like a little starter plant. It has a little, little tiny bulb. Oh, okay. And that's what this okay. plant is. It's a proven winter variety, which we grow a lot of proven winter ver varieties. And, uh, yeah, you can start these. I started these the end of February in the greenhouse, and I've probably moved them six different times just to keep them. Because when you grow anything in a greenhouse for that long period of time, the, you, you, you're going to have bug issues. Mm -hmm. And if, if you keep, if I let a lot of the, the bottom foliage fall in this pot and just sit there, that's where the, the bugs are going to fester. Wow. So we clean everything. We space everything. I've, I've literally, in, in, instead of watering overhead, I've literally taken a, uh, a, a small uh, Poland Springs bottle and just it gave just it a little. So the, yeah, so the, so the leaves aren't wet? Yeah, yeah the leaves right. aren't wet, but just if one out of, say 40 is a little dry yeah. instead of watering all the 40 yeah just give it a little shot of water <laughs> as i'm walking by give it a little shot that's some and, love and, there and, and that's it's so important and like putting circulation fans in um we've moved fans from different houses just to get the air flowing if it's cold outside i it can't afford to run the heater so we got to keep the, the the greenhouse locked down get the, the fans in there and just circulate in the air drying everything out so we don't get a mold or mildew and things like that. So so then another thing that, that you're always taking part of, because Marshalls has always been really entwined with the community here, but you're always part of farmer's markets. Um, you, you take the farm stand over the bridge 
Uh, do you want to uh, discuss some of those things? Yeah, we've done a little of everything. We've, we, we've of course, got into the KPM Farmers Market. Uh, I think this will be our sixth or seventh year. and love that. Mm. Um, Nikki does a fa- fantastic job. Um, but we've also did some pop-up farm stands. We did one for Applied Materials in Blackburn Circle here. Um, oh, that's cool. So you basically go up there with a the truck and... Go up there, set up a little, you know, a table. Stand, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it, it, it gets people... What it does, it gets people to come to the farm. Because oh, yeah, they don't right. only want the produce. They want the... The monkey bread. The monkey bread. <laughs> Right, that's monkey kid, bread. That's what my kids always wanted. Yeah, they want the monkey bread. Yeah. They want the meats. We do grass fed. We do doms out of Malden. They want uh, oh, Richardson's so ice cream. Yeah, which it's a, it's the best place for local yeah. foods. I'm telling you, pie pies yeah. and all that. I, yeah, yeah, the pies. Yeah. Uh, we have Man Orchards and Methuen that does our pies, and then Rebecca Doyen yeah, will be doing right. our uh, uh, our key lime pies, which. I love key lime pie. They're so yeah, good. Her key so, lime pie. We tasted uh, it. It is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. So you'll be able to so. get those at Marshall Farm Stand. Right. right. Concord Street. But yeah. the thing is, yeah. when I go to trade shows, the first question I ask vendors that are there, where are you located? Mm-hmm. I, I don't want a California product. I don't yeah. want, a, you know, maybe New York, uh, East Coast, but I want something local. Yeah. You know, we, we have local gelato that's out of Malden. We have oh, um, Lox Cookies is out of Essex. Yep. You know, great operation. Great yeah. operation there. Um, we have a couple small bakeries. Of course, Vigilio's being one, and uh, Sunray Bakery out of Beverly. Um, I love just, Sunray bread. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's I great. didn't know you sold Sunray yeah, bread. Yeah, actually. yeah. Huh. yeah. So, yeah, you know, I I like local products. Um, when we fired, when I first started the farm stand, we grew it and we sold it. We didn't bring in anything else. My dad was like, "No, we just sell produce." Um, and then a woman said to me, um, I wish you could complete the meal. You know, you know, you get all this great produce. Give me, you know, s- salad dressings go with my salad. Give me. And then that just transcended into what it is today. Yeah. You can really easily get a couple of beautiful meals. Oh, mostly, oh yeah. Mostly, yeah. 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 So you have your own produce in that farm stand. You have all these other, you know, nice additions that make a meal and then you have the greenhouses right. where all these beautiful flowers are growing and you also have the alpaca out yeah, back yeah. yeah you want to tell us about adding and other the animals but yeah but they're the they're the featured players i'm yeah. telling you they <laughs> they have more fans than i do that's yeah. good. <laughs> and they're great they're, they're great the uh, they, they can't bite you because they only have three bottom teeth <laughs> um they 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 just like to hang out they 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 They'll run around, if we get them out in the field, which we try to do a couple times a week, they'll just run around and chase each other, which is cool. Then we got the baby goats that yeah. uh, chase them, and Aww. then they chase the baby goats. It's, it's kind of cute. Uh, we have actually four female alpacas pregnant at this time. so Baby uh, alpacas. Yeah, and that's always special. Um, God, I had five punchlines for that. You told me. PG, <laughs> um, but it, it's just a great way to get people to come to the farm. Yeah, you know, to bring their families to come, and, and, and it gets the kids into because you always grew up, you you always go where your parents took you. Yeah, right. You right. know, yeah. oh, I remember my parents used to take me here. I'm going to take my kids there. You know, so it's so important. We're going to do some family fun days this year uh, because Corey. Uh, Ruined the strawberry festival. I know. I was going to get into that too. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, but yeah, was I was, was going to end with see at the strawberry yeah. festival. Yeah, <laughs> would have been the seventh one. Yeah, mm. you know. Uh, but I'm going to do some family fun days this year. Yeah. Um, we're going to do some um, little plantings for kids. Oh, kids fine. can come and plant their own seed, and then they can see how the, the seed develops from a seedling, and, and then they can put it in the garden or in a pot. So we're going to do some special things for for, for kids' day. Yeah, nice. And when's that? We haven't, it hasn't you got that far yet. Okay. I've been <laughs> too busy growing the stuff in yeah. the greenhouse. And but trying to keep the rain I, off of I'm everything. thinking late uh, late June um, when the kids get closer out of school so right. they can not only plant their plant, but they can care for it. Yeah. You know, I think it's a, ba- a great uh, learning tool for the kids to, and hopefully maybe one of them turns into a farmer. There you go. Well, that's what we need, yeah. that's that's right? right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. right. Exactly. Good thinking. So, uh, and aside now, what about so? 
when you, every time you go to Marshalls, you see this like eclectic mix of who your regular clients are. You've got the neighbors who are there. There's always the kids there. There's the summer residents. There's the beach crowd. Right. There's that old lady with the corn cob. There's yeah. her, other, <laughs> yeah, her, her other bag. So what? Um, uh, the winger chic traffic. Uh, wow. What do you Mrs. do Mayor. about that? Wow. Mrs. Mayor, please help me. Um, um, does it help or hurt, Bob? Because it I mean, hurts. It yeah. hurts because if you are, say, you're in East Gloucester. And you're saying, you know what? I need some corn. F- I got a cookout to go to. I need some corn. It's 9.30 on a Sunday morning. And you're saying to yourself, oh, that traffic. Yeah. That traffic. And now everybody's got the GPS. And what so they, they do, they know. what yeah. they do, well, they see the traffic. But these are people coming from out of, out of town. And what they're doing, instead of going Concord Street, they're coming around the other end of Concord Street. Right. Yeah. We had traffic. Past the farm stand last year. Wow! So on both sides. Oh my god! Street, That's different. Yeah. <clears throat> so I did a live video for the mayor, and and she she's great, and she 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 listens, and uh, I I there's got to be better signage. It should be at the highway. It's tough. It, it should, should be, at the, be at the highway. I never understood why it wasn't even at the um, the turn on to Concord. Right. Um, because once you're down that road, or at drive and people, at the drive, saying, you can't go down there. The, the lot's full. People are still driving up to the right. lot, and right. then they have to turn around right. there and come exactly. all the way back. Exactly. Horror show. Right. So what they try to do is they they try to stop them in Marshall Square, the square that's named after my dad. Yep. Is, and they try to turn them around. By that time, this is when the lot is full. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. By right. that time, the the park the uh, traffic's back to up towards one twenty eight. Yeah. Right. But I think, you know, if they they got to work on something, an app or yeah. something, you get an alert. Yeah. The park stage four. I, I tell anybody that comes in, where can we go for a beach? I just go to stage four. It's such a beautiful area. You got a little bit of a beach, but you just got so much history there, and it's a great place to take a family. You got things to do. I, I grew up going to the cupboard, you know, and that's one of my favorite places in Gloucester mm-hmm. because it brings back memories. My, my I actually did the Marshalls and the cupboard back to back over the weekend. Oh, I did it. I had to get the hanging plants. It was Mother's Day. She has to have her plants. I get my stuff for around the mailbox, you know. Um, but then it's always because we usually I pop by. Maybe my shopping habits are different because I, I I like I love flowers. So I usually yeah. get flowers, but also we'll do like the Don's meat, like things to yeah. grill that right. night, and then you know the right vegetables, a cucumber, or whatever for a salad too. Right. And the next next week, a week from uh, tomorrow, we'll open the farm stand. Yeah. Up. So by the time people are listening to this, yeah, yeah. We'll, you'll be we'll up be, and running. We'll be up and blast. running. Uh, people, <laughs> it's so sad when they get out and they they're running into the farm stand and they, they turn to look and there's no food and they're like. Where's the food? Because we're selling plants right now. And they're like, I don't want plants. <laughs> it's want, coming. I want some meat. Yeah. So, but it, it, it'll be nice when everything's open because it'll get more clientele in there. And I think the way we have the new setup for the, the, the greenhouses is going to be more inviting to people that might not be gardeners, but they can grab a pot. Uh, a dahlia or a geranium or a hanging plant or a hanging I mean, plant so beautiful. and just you know for a gift or just to throw in their deck yep. you know yeah. so i think it'll work hand in hand yeah. so people can go into those greenhouses right yeah. and, yeah. and yeah. shop around yep. yeah people um we got a brand new retail house which is state of the art the sides roll up and it, the temperature in there will be the same as the temperature outside Okay. So you don't go in that greenhouse and you're like in there for 10 minutes and you're, you're sweating and you're yeah. uncomfortable. It's very comfortable for the customer, but it's most importantly, it's uncomfortable for the plants. Right. So the plants aren't getting all stressed out because plants are like people. If it's cold and rainy, they're not going to like it. If it's hot and humid, they're not going to like it. Right. You know, so if you're feeling uncomfortable in a greenhouse, that plant is feeling uncomfortable. Mm. Oh, so. that's cool. Huh. Yeah, so um, that greenhouse, I think, is going to be very popular because we have A to Z in there. If you're doing your own basket or pot, you can buy anything in that greenhouse, or you can buy one of our pots or one of our hangers. So yeah. it's really nice. Yeah, so there you have it. What do you think, Heather? Well, I, w- I have one more question. Sure. So do you have a favorite recipe from your mother maybe when you were coming in for a lunch oh, or a Sunday see, dinner? See, my mother was famous for Sunday dinners. Yeah? And, and it was never a recipe. Well, how about it but w- something she made from the fam- oh, the produce? Oh, the produce. I mean, she, she, would take, um, she would take zucchini, summer squash, 
tomatoes, onions, and she would throw it in a pan, all chopped up, and she would uh, throw it in the oven. And I, 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 I don't know because I'm, I didn't really. You weren't paying attention. Paying then. attention. I, yeah. I just wanted to eat it. Yeah. And and at that last ten minutes, she would throw some cheese on it and and some bread breadcrumbs. That was always a, a pot. But she that just grew good. She she would just she would spin anything. But the whole thing is she had to uh, gr- uh, cook everything in bulk. Oh, right. Because we had twelve kids. Twelve kids. And then we had people working there. So she would be having these big pots on the stove, overtaking the stove, and it would, everybody outside shopping, smelling stuff. And, and this I still, was in that little house on the hill. Yeah. Uh, I still uh, have a cashier that used to work for me. When she worked, she only want, she, she wanted to make sure she worked Sunday, mo- Sunday afternoons because of Sunday dinner. Mm-hmm. And she still, whenever I see her, I says, I miss your mas- my mother's mashed potatoes. It was so good. Oh, that's really nice. That's how we grew up, Um, whether you could eat when it was ready or you had to eat when you had time to eat. Yeah. Uh, But she did everything in big, huge, these cast iron pots, and it just... Do you have any of those pots? Oh, I don't even know where they are. Where'd they go? Yeah. (laughs) There's there's a ten of us, so I'm sure somebody has some in their kitchen. Before Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't get much from... From that, <laughs> you got the farm stand. You got the I guess. farm stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, we want to thank you for your time today. No, thanks for having Farmer me. Bob. I, I yeah. really appreciate and it. And thank you for farming. No, I mean, really, I, I love it. And um, thanks for my dad. Uh, you yeah. Know, if, if it wasn't for him and being persistent, and uh, and and also thanks to the community. I mean, I I, I know people that still show up there that when they first started coming there, I was in diapers running around the farm stand, Aww. and. And when I was old enough to carry a box, my dad had me carrying the boxes to people's car and putting them in their car. And those people still come in. They, they you know, grab me by the cheeks and says, <laughs> "You're doing a good job, Frankie." That's you know, great. so okay. it, it means a lot to me. I, I I bounce out of bed in the morning, maybe with a a, a couple of snaps, crackles, and pops. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I I do I cannot wait to get there and, and start the day. That is so great. Yeah. It really is. It's such a gift to this community to have you there. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, so go see uh, the Marshall family over in Congress Street in West Gloucester or at the Cape Ann Farmer's Market or at the Magnolia, Magnolia Farmer's, Farmer's Market, Market, which will be, start, right. which be on Sundays, I Sunday believe. Sunday mornings, yeah. I think, is going to be a blast. That's uh, great. I think it's going to work out well. And just the, the these markets that we do and mm. some people, you know, maybe there's too many markets. And I, I even if I make a nickel, going to these markets, the smaller markets. Um, it's all about educating people on eating healthy, eating the right things. Yeah. And I meet so many people. There's a couple older women from Magnolia live on Lexington Ave down the end, and they they do all they can do to walk down Lexington Ave to buy something. And uh, they're like, I don't, I wouldn't be able to get this if you weren't here. That's special. And yeah. that, oh, that's, that's great. That means more to me than anything else. So... T- definitely come visit us at, at the market. It's a great take. KP and Farmers Market is the best in the state for my money. Um, so entertaining. And um, the Magnolia one, is it's it's there when you need us. There you go. Thanks yeah. again, Bobby. All right. All thank right. you. Thank you. Good, good. All right, we're back for the side dish here with Farmer Bob Marshall of Marshall's Farm Stand. Uh, we're having a great conversation as we disappeared for a few seconds, but we want to talk about the challenges of uh, farming in today's world. Yeah, the biggest challenge is the, the, the short season. Um, Any way we can extend the season, we try to. Um, you know, it, it even it seems like our falls are better than our springs, so we try to extend it further that side of things, and that means planting a little bit later in the season. Usually mm. we, we would stop planting somewhere around the first week of August and, and just that will be it. Hopefully get it for the f- first frost. Uh, but we've extended that towards the end of August. Uh, but the early season, we our first acres of corn and peas, the main two uh, uh, for, uh, vegetables, are grown under plastic. And it's, it's all... Um, done in rows so that when we cut it, we can peel it right up, and um, you know it, it, it gives us a head start. Yeah. You know, normally we don't pick corn until the end of July. Now we're, we're just after the Fourth of July. Really, getting the first ear of corn. 
So, and, and I've been in a field with them before, picking corn yeah. and Aww. eating it right there in the field, yeah. and it is awesome. Aww. You can't beat the native corn. Yeah. Right. So right. sweet. It's gross. We'll love it. So are there any, that sounds like a, is it a stark change compared to like when your father was farming? Oh, by all means, because back when we were, my dad was still growing corn, um, it was all the old variety, sweet sue, sweet sal, the, it was always that. You had to pick it and run it right to the kitchen and put it in, put a, in the pot. Put yeah. it in the pot. <laughs> now the corn today is it, it can, has a shelf life. It you you can refrigerate it. I can give you an ear of corn that I just picked, and I can give you an ear of corn that was sitting in the refrigerator for two to three years, uh, two to three days. Um, that's why and some it's gonna of, taste really good. Yeah, so, yeah, and that's why some of the corn from down south that we get over the winter is gone a little bit better because they're starting to grow different varieties that have a little bit longer shelf life and it doesn't taste like cow corn and gets all stuck in your teeth. It has a nice bite to it. Mm. Um, but the, the, the growing season being what it is, we have to have a head start. Like uh, native peas, you got to have native peas for 4th of July. It, it just goes hand in hand. Native peas and salmon, you got to have that. So giving us a head start by getting that stuff in the ground with the, this past spring we've had, it's been terrible that's so but bad the stuff has been in the ground and it's it's yeah. it's well ahead of where it would normally be if it was just so we'll have a, it on the fourth of july we will have <laughs> it on the 4th okay of july. and and it's just a different way of getting a head start into to growing and and getting the produce to people's table yeah how about pests or anything like that well we're lucky enough um i think it was 18 years ago we joined up with umass amherst to be the one of the original uh, Marinis was the, one of the original farms to to start growing IPM, which is in, integrated pest management. Oh, okay. um, so the fields are all monitored by UMass Amherst. They come out and they will walk through the fields, see what see what kind of bugs you got going on. It could be a silkworm, it could be uh, you know different things, a borers, um, and they will tell us what they're going to release into. They release moths that kill other insects, and and we don't have to spray. I mean, my dad, I still have his notebook when he was growing in the early 70s. Every day was marked what he had to do that day. So I got to spray the tomatoes, and the next day I got to spray the corn. Everything, that was how it was farmed. You just kept, so every year he just opened up his old notebook and says, oh, today I got to spray tomatoes. Now we don't do any of that. We, we're, we're monitored that uh, th- even the sprays we do use, it's all organic sprays and yeah. things that aren't going to harm anything or harm people. Um, and it, it works. It, it works. It, it, and if we, if we, we weren't doing what we're doing now, I would have been s- skeptical about it, but it works. I've seen it firsthand. Well, and, you have beautiful produce. And the sure. produce, yeah. it, 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 it it looks pristine. Yeah, it you does. Know? So well, those are good changes, huh? Yeah, that's great. It, it, it just, it's just—it's incredible. And, and every year, they have fundraisers and uh, dinners for for local farms to come together and kind of hobnob. And all that money will go to UMass Amherst for this type of research. That's great. You know, we're growing corn now that doesn't need a lot of water. You know, oh. that and th- little things like that because once. One of the old timers told me, an old farmer says, once you water corn once, it's a losing proposition. Oh, really? Because we don't make money on corn. Corn, corn is just the lure. Yeah. <laughs> it gets people to come in to buy the tomatoes and the other things. Huh. But corn is not a money maker. It's just a, a drawing card. Yeah. And I tell people every day, people come, they buy a bushel of corn for a cookout or a picnic or something like that. I tell them, it's, it's, I'm selling you a bag of business cards because everybody's going to buy, uh, bite into that ear of corn and say, where would you get this? Yeah. Marshall's Farm. That's a great line. So. That's really interesting. Well, thanks for that. That's oh. a really interesting conversation. Thank you. Thanks, Bobby. 